When a person suffers from amnesia, they can forget who they are. They might wander around unsure of where they live or who their family is. That person could be in serious danger. The same is true for a person who doesn't know who they are spiritually. Today on Faith Builders, I want to ask you, who do you think you are? Your spiritual identification is so important. Just like in our natural society, in order for you to get access to certain places, you have to be able to prove who you are by showing your ID. You have to be able to show your ID to board a plane. You have to be able to show your ID to open a bank account. You have to have your identification in order to have access and in order to have mobility. And the same is so true in our spiritual walk. In order for us to have access into our covenant rights and into the kingdom of God, we have to be able to prove or to show or to know our identity. We have to be able to have our spiritual ID ready at all times. And faith is what activates that spiritual ID. Faith in the documents or the spiritual witness or the spiritual evidence is what causes that ID to be secured in our heart and in our mind. You've got to know who you are. Who do you think you are? If you, do you you think you are what you're going through? Do you think you are what you're facing right now? Do you think you are broke just because you have a financial situation in your life? Or do you think that you are the child of God who has supplied, my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus? Who do you think you are? Because who you think you are is going to determine which identification you pull out. If you've been deceived, if you've been tricked into thinking that you are what you're going through, then you're going to be stuck in that situation. There's no mobility out of that situation without your ID. In order for you to get on a plane and exit out of that situation, you're going to have to have your spiritual identification that tells you who you are. So who do you think you are in that situation? Now, last week I started talking about the different documents that we have to have to obtain our ID. If you go to get your driver's license, they're going to ask you for other documents. They're going to say, we need your birth certificate. We need to be able to prove when you were born, where you were born, and what they called you when you were born. And in order to get your spiritual ID, you have to be able to show that you who you who that you were born again, first of all, that, that you are who God called you. you. Your name in God's sight is different than, than what other people have called you in the past. Other people may have called you lazy, but God doesn't call you lazy. He's called you righteous. Other people, you, you may have looked at your past your situation, your, your mistakes, and the guilt calls you a sinner. The guilt calls you shameful, but the, the, the Word of God calls you or identifies you as the righteousness of God in Christ. So we found out last week that according to the Word of God, that we are a new creature in Christ. Old things are passed away and all things are created new and these new things were created of God. So what is in you now as a new creature, as a new believer is the things that God has built in you. You have his righteousness. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says that Jesus became sin. Who knew no sin? So that you could be made or become the righteousness of God in Christ. You are now righteous and God calls you or identifies you as righteous. You are now the righteousness of God. You are a partaker of his divine nature. You don't have a sin nature in you. It is not natural for you to sin anymore. Why? Because you have the divine nature of God on the inside of you. That old nature has been taken away and this new nature has been put in its place. But what do we need? What documents do we need to be able to obtain this kind of ID, this kind of identification? Where can I go in the Word of God to build my faith and to activate this identification? Well, we went to 2nd, uh, we went to 3rd John 
uh, uh, 1 John chapter 5, I'm sorry. We went to 1 John chapter 5 and we looked at the fact that there are three witnesses on the earth, three supporting evidences on the earth. And those were the spirit, the water, and the blood. That's in 1 John 5, 8. The spirit, the water, and the blood, these three bear record or give witness or testimony for us on the earth. The spirit, the water, and the blood. And last week we found out, according to Hebrews 9, 14, that through the eternal spirit, Jesus offered himself to God without spot, without sin, without any blemish. He offered himself through the power of the eternal spirit. So the Holy Spirit witnesses for you and I that we are without spot, that when we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we are identifying and taking his identity. And that is a supporting evidence that we are crucified with Christ. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 says, I am crucified with Christ. You need to put that in your heart and put it in your mouth and you need to declare every day, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet it is not I that lives, but it, it, it is Christ that's living in me. It is the power of the anointed one and his anointing that's living on the inside of me. I've been crucified. Did you know that? I know you can't see the nail scars in my hands or in my feet. I know you can't see them, but I'm telling you, I have evidence in the spirit the Holy Spirit bears record that I've been crucified. I was crucified when Jesus was crucified. He did it for me. He was the lamb slain for me. And because of that, I believe it. And my faith activates to the point that I know I have been crucified with Christ. That's evidence. That is a document. That is a supporting legal document. My faith is a supporting legal document and the Holy Spirit is bearing record, yes, I gave her that document. I gave her that document that she has been crucified with Christ. So the Spirit, the water, and the blood, the Spirit gives evidence that we've been crucified with Christ. And then there's the water. How does the water bear record for us? Romans chapter 6 is where I want you to go to find the, the document that you need to build or activate your spiritual ID. And Romans chapter 6, beginning in verse 3, says, Says, know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ, we were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism. I've been buried. Yeah, I, I've been crucified and I have been buried with Christ. I was in the tomb with Jesus. When Jesus went in that tomb by faith, I was buried with him. And when I went down in the baptism waters, when I was baptized after I got saved, it was evidence. It was a supporting witness. It was a testimony that I have been buried. I've not only been crucified, but I've been in the tomb with Jesus. I've been buried with him. And when I was buried with him, that I have evidence evidence that I have died to the old man. See, when I was baptized, I went down the old and I came up. That was evidence or, or a supporting witness that I am risen with the newness of life. I, came, I went down and I left the old Michelle down there. I don't want her to resurrect. I don't want her walking around and messing up my life anymore. I left the old Michelle down and I raised up in the power of God. So the water bears witness that we've been buried. See, you need to have evidence that you're born again. You need to have spiritual ID that you're not who you used to be. How can you be if you've been crucified and buried? How can you be the old person if you've been crucified and buried? You were crucified with Christ. You were buried with him by baptism. And then the blood, Hebrews chapter 13 gives evidence for the blood to speak and to show us a new identity. Remember, we're going to go get our ID and we have to have our documents in place to show that we can get our identification and get that new image, that new person on the, uh, on the identification. So Hebrews chapter 13 is evidence or the supporting document of the blood. Hebrews 13 verse 20 says, the God of peace who brought again from the dead, our Lord, that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant. God raised Jesus from the dead through the blood of of the everlasting covenant. Hebrews 13, 20, read it in your own Bible. It's there. God raised Jesus from the dead. Now I know that we have evidence that the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead now quickens our mortal body. But understand the spirit and the blood always work together. The spirit and the blood work in conjunction with each other. Remember it said in 1 John 5, 8, that these three agree in one. 
And they're working together at the same time to produce in you the life of God. So the spirit of, of God raised Christ from the dead and the blood of the everlasting covenant. God raised according to Hebrews 13, 20. God brought from the dead Jesus Christ through the blood of the everlasting covenant. So the blood bears witness for us. You know, when you get saved, when you get born again, it's the blood in heaven on the heavenly mercy seat that is speaking for you. And the Bible says that if the blood of Abel could speak certain things, how much more valuable are the things that the blood of Christ speaks for us? The blood raised Jesus. The blood of the everlasting covenant raised you. So this tells me that not only have I been crucified, not only have I been buried with him, but I've been resurrected with him too. I've been raised up in the newness of life. I've been raised up with the resurrection power that raised Jesus from the dead. I've been raised up into an everlasting covenant and the blood is now the, the, the power or the evidence that tells my situation, that tells me my faith in the blood activates my spiritual identity. Now you can't push me around. You don't know who I am. So cancer can't push me around because of who I am in Christ, because of what he has accomplished for me. I've been crucified, buried, and resurrected. I've already faced and overcome through Christ Jesus. Now I've been made a conquering, victorious. The Bible calls me more than a conqueror. See, that's my identification. I'm more than a conqueror. Why? Because I've been crucified, with Christ. I've been buried with him in, in baptism and I've been resurrected into the newness of life. I've been raised up to walk in this new life, this new ID, this new identification that he has for me. So who do you think you are? That's my question for you today. Who do you think you are? Because if you think you are what your situation is, then you're stuck there. There's no mobility out of that situation if you are adapting to it. There's no, there's no access into the provision without identification. In order for you to get what God has for you, you know, it's already yours. It already has your name on it. God is not going to get, he's not going to break the bank if he provides for you and me at the same time. He's bigger than that. He is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask or think according to the power that works in us. What is that power? The power of knowing who we are, the power of the covenant, the power power of activating what Jesus has already accomplished for us. We don't have to continue trying to do something when Jesus has already done it. We need to activate what he's done by faith. Remember, faith is the victory that comes over or overcomes the world. It repositions me as the victorious one. Faith repositions me so I'm never under the circumstance. Never, never under the circumstance. Where am I? I'm above only, according to the word of God. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath, above only. And so I've got to identify with the word of God and the finished work of what Jesus has done for me. And, and so people ask me, they'll hear my testimony and they'll say, how did you change your life so dramatically? Because I was never raised in church. I ran away from home when I was 15 years old, ended up in drugs and crime from the time that I was 15 to 23. And when I was 23 years old, God came into my life and he saved me through the power of Jesus Christ and his, his blood that cleansed me. And I went from being at the, uh, I, I became a total opposite of what I was. I became a, t a totally different person and people who are still stuck in those situations will hear my testimony and it seems so far away for them to think how can you be preaching the word of God? How can you be a pastor? How can you be, be, be on television knowing the things that you did? I didn't do those things. Michelle B.C. before Christ did those things. I have a new identification. I have a new identity. When I got saved, I got a whole new identity. And that identity is in Christ. See, I was buried. I was crucified, buried, and resurrected. I have to know that. I have to think that about myself. And by faith, through faith in what those three 
elements of Scripture tell me I can walk in the new identity that God has for me. And the Bible says that we have to renew our mind. I want you to think about this for a minute. You have been given the mind of Christ. The Bible tells us that in 1 Corinthians 2, 6, that we have the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ. And you say, well, what does that mean? The word Christ means the anointed one, Jesus, and his anointing. I have the mind of the anointed one. The same mindset, the same uh, capability in my thinking is that Jesus had is in my thinking, and it's available to you. We have the mind of the anointed one. So we have to walk in the anointed mindset and not walk in shame. We can't walk in guilt. You, if you walk around in guilt, you're not walking as who you are. You're walking as who you were. If you walk around in, in, the, in, in embarrassment because of what you did 10 years ago or what you did yesterday that you already asked Jesus to forgive you of, the embarrassment and the guilt is not going to help you. You've got to, you've got to renew your mind. You have the capability to have the mind of Christ, access to the mind of Christ. Who do you think you are? Who do you think you are? And, you know, to become, to become, uh, uh, and, uh, to, to operate, let me say it this way, to operate in your new identity, you've got to change your mind. See, when you got saved, when you got saved, you were born again spiritually, but your mind is like a computer that has stored all of that information. You need to erase the hard drive and you need to download the correct information. It's like if somebody brought a computer to me and they said, this is a great computer, but it was used by a person who made porn movies. Well, I don't want any of the information on that computer. I'm going to have to de delete and erase everything. I'm going to totally erase that thing and reboot it and start Start it over again so that it is clean and doesn't have any of the old documents stored on it. I don't want any of those old movie files. And there are some movie files that play in your mind that you need to delete those out of there. And only the Word of God can delete those shameful things out of our life. Only the blood of Jesus can wash our hard drive of our mind. You have to renew your mind. You know, that word renew, it's in Romans chapter 12, I believe it is, in verse 2, it says that, we can be transformed by the renewing of our mind. And that word transformed means the same metamorphosis that a, a caterpillar becomes a butterfly. That caterpillar and the butterfly is the same being. It just transformed so dramatically that you can't even recognize the, the caterpillar in the butterfly. When you see the butterfly, you think of what a beautiful, awesome, uh, majestic little creature this is. But you can't even imagine that it used to be a caterpillar. Well, that's the transformation that took place in my life. When Jesus came into my life and he saved me spiritually, he made me a new creature spiritually. He gave me a new identity spiritually, I had to transform my mind. I had to renew my mind in order to walk in the transformation and manifest the butterfly transformation because I was that ugly, nasty caterpillar. And so Jesus, through his word and through his blood, cleansed my mind from the shame and the guilt of all of the things I had done. And he renewed my mind so that I could walk in the identity of who I am. Who do you think you are? Ask yourself that right now. Who do I think I am? If God was to tell you who he thinks you are and you set it up next to who you think you are, is it in line with each other? You've got to be renewed. You've got to be, have your mind renewed. And so uh, the word renew means to renovate. And when I first went to Kansas City, one of the first jobs that I got before I was ready for ministry, one of the first jobs that I had was I worked for a, 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 a landlord who had multiple properties all around town. And these properties were, were uh, rented out. And what my job was is that when a tenant moved out, I would go in and I would clean the house. I would take all of the trash out of the house and then I would paint it and clean it and get it ready for the next tenant. And there were some nasty, nasty houses that I had to clean. And one of the first things that I had to do was what I called to trash out that house. I had to go in because people would move out or get evicted and leave all kinds of stuff. I mean, those refrigerators 
refrigerators were nasty. They had bugs crawling in them. They had old food molding in them. And I had to go in and I would spend usually one to two days just taking trash bag after trash bag after trash bag of old clothes and, 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 and food and trash out of the house. I'd pull all the old furniture until I had everything out of the house. And then I would clean it and I would paint it. And when I got done, man, those houses looked like brand new. They would sparkle. They smelled good. And, and it was a total transformation. And that's what we have to do to our mind. Because when we get saved, we still have all that old garbage in our thinking, that stinking thinking up here in our mind. And it, if we try to live our Christian identity, our new life in Christ and walk in the newness of life, remember we've been crucified. We've been buried. We've been resurrected with him. And if I try to walk in that with my old way of thinking, then I am going to frustrate myself. I am going to, I am going to be a carnal Christian because I'm trying to walk in the old carnal mind and it's an enmity or adversity against God and it keeps hindering the blessing he wants to do in my life. So you've got to trash out your mind. You've got to get all of that old way of thinking out and you've got to get all that guilt and that shame out of there. You've got to get all of that, that, uh, that mentality that I'm a loser, I'm a low down, no good, nothing, God, you know, how could you have anything to do with me? And you've got to renew your mind as to who you are. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. I am a new creature in him. In him, I live and move and have my being. Old things are passed away. All things are created new. So I'm going to walk in this new life. And in this new life, I'm more than a conqueror. In this new life, I'm the head, not the tail. In this new life, I'm blessed going in. I'm blessed coming out. I'm blessed in the field, the city, the basket, the storehouse. Whoa! I think I like this way of thinking. I'm going to get the trash out so that I have the ability to clean and to, to renovate my mind. So to renew your mind means to renovate, to renovate. You've got to get all of that old busted down, broke down, uh, uh, tore up from the floor up thinking out of your life. And you've got to begin thinking the thoughts that God has about you. God said in the book of Isaiah, in the book of Isaiah chapter 55, verse 7, he says, my thoughts are higher than your thoughts thoughts and my ways are higher than your ways. So here's what I want you to do. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to take my thoughts. I'm giving them to you. God wasn't saying, listen here, my thoughts are way up here and your thoughts are way down here. So, so, you know, you just, just, just deal with being way down here. No, he's offering you the high life. He's offering you the, the high life. He said, my thoughts are higher. Take my thoughts so that you can live the life I have for you because you'll never enter into the fullness that God has if you don't know who you are, if you can't prove your ID by faith. Faith is the, is the identification card that says, I am crucified with Christ. The spirit, the water, and the blood. I'm crucified with Christ. I'm buried with him by baptism. And I've been resurrected to the newness of life. I've got the spirit speaking for me and giving evidence and testimony. I've got the blood speaking for me. I've got the water speaking for me. I've got evidence on the earth that I am a new creature. I am the child of God. I am a king and a priest. According, his blood has redeemed me. And I am who God says I am in order for you to have access in order for you to have mobility in the kingdom of God and in his provision, you've got to have your spiritual identification. Do you have your ID? I want you to stay tuned. I've got some information my announcer is going to share with you. It has become very important to have your spiritual identification with you at all times. Michelle Steele uncovers this truth in her insightful new two CD series, I've Got My ID. Michelle will teach you how to find your identity in the Word of God, how to activate your spiritual ID for entrance into God's provision, and much more. This resource can be yours for a love gift of $10 or more. You can order today with a credit or debit card by calling 1-888-901-8242 or by going online to michellesteelministries.com or you can send a check or money order to Post Office Box 452, DeSoto, Kansas, 66018. You can order a DVD copy of today's broadcast for only $12. Please mention show number 1028 when you order.
Obtaining your spiritual identification is a lot easier than getting your identification in the natural. You don't have to send in a check or money order. You don't have to write in with, with certain details. All you have to do is receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. He is your new ID. He is your new identification. And in His life, the life that He has for you, there's no shame, there's no guilt, there's no fear of your past, there's no torment of all of the things. He cleanses you of all that. He wipes that away and He liberates you and frees you and sets you in His family, His kingdom. If you have never received Jesus as Lord and Savior, I want to give you that opportunity today. Or maybe you've been watching me and you remember what it was like to walk with God and it's been so long since you've been in contact or relationship with Him. Today is the day to return to the one who loves you more than anybody on this earth will ever love you. Today is the day to reach out and receive what God has for you. Would you pray that with me today? Just open up your heart and let Jesus be your new identification. Let him be your Lord, your Savior, your Redeemer, your Sanctifier, your beginning and your end. I want to pray with you right now. Father, in Jesus' name, I come to you with an open heart. I need your life in me. I need you to change my situation and my life because I want to be who you've called me to be. I believe Jesus died on a cross in my place and I receive that by faith right now. And I believe God that you raised him from the dead and I receive that and I'm being raised right now. Forgive me of my sin. Cleanse me and put your spirit on the inside of me so that I can be who you've called me to be. In Jesus' name. If you've prayed that prayer, your life has just taken a turn for the best. God's best is at your disposal. He wants to do good in your life. If you've prayed that prayer, I would love to hear about what God is doing in your life. If you have prayer requests, if you have testimonies, if there are family members who are walking away from God that you want me to join you in prayer for, we need to pray for your kids, your grandkids. We need to pray for your nieces and nephews. If there is drug addiction in their life, please write me. I want to join in prayer, believing God for freedom in that person's life. They need the, 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 the blood covering. They need our prayers so that the Holy Spirit has authority to draw them to the things that God has for them. So please write me, contact me because I care about what's going on in your life and God cares about what's going on in your life. And he wants you to walk in your identification. He wants you to have your spiritual ID with you at all times. He wants you to know that you've been crucified with Christ, that you have been buried with him by baptism and that you've been resurrected in the newness of life so that you can have access and mobility into his perfect plan, his best. God doesn't want you struggling. He didn't save you to struggle. He didn't bring you this far just to let you down. He didn't bring you into his kingdom just so that you could be miserable and look at other people and say, I don't know why it's not working for me. He wants it to work for you, honey. You need to pull your ID out and by faith access the plan, the, the will and the provision that God has already made available to you. You are his child. You are his son and his daughter. If you've accepted Jesus as Lord, and he wants you to walk in his fullness and demonstrate his goodness to other people. Do you have your ID? Who do you think you are? Come on, think about it. Who do I think I am? And if I'm not walking in line with who God says I am, then I need to get in the word and I need to renew my mind. I need to renovate and get the trash out. And I need to believe that I am what God says that I am because you have got to have some access and some mobility into his plan and his purpose. God hasn't changed his mind about you. He's still thinking good thoughts about you. He's still thinking thoughts about an expected end. He still has a determination in his mind to build your life. And I want to remind you to remember to build your faith and to frame your world by the word of God.